in a country scarred by decades of war. One man tries to capture an image of hope. I'm not a war photographer. I'm a peace photographer. But to show people how important is the peace, I have to be in the war zones. National Geographic photographer Reza journeys to Afghanistan to seek a portrait of a nation and come face to face with the people on the edge of an uncertain future. Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan. Crowded and uncertain. National Geographic photographer Reza now starts a tense assignment here. He has returned in search of a portrait, one that will capture in a single image the face of Afghanistan today. I don't take pictures. The people, they give their pictures to me. I mean, every day, everywhere for me is a challenge to to capture a picture that shows the reality of the country. Twenty-five years ago, Reza took an iconic image of a young resistance fighter named Ahmed Shah Massoud. The legendary commander fought Soviet occupiers and the Taliban for 20 years and would become a national hero. Reza followed Massoud throughout, getting closer to the wars here than most journalists. I'm not a war photographer. I think I'm more a peace correspondent. I'm a peace photographer. But to show the people how important is the peace, I have to be in the war zones. After decades of fighting, Afghanistan today remains a battlefield, now in an expanding war that threatens security around the world. Eight years after American and coalition forces arrived here, Afghanistan faces a resurgent Taliban and deteriorating confidence. It's, it's very dangerous because always being on the street, always being in contact with the people. You are always target. Every minute's the danger of the being kidnapped or suicide bombers. It, it, it could happen. Oh, Yet despite the escalating war, Reza is seeking an image that captures the full spirit of Afghanistan. Not only its fears, but its vitality and hopes. His quest will take him from the streets of Kabul to the northern border. And it begins here, in one of his favorite places, the bird market of Kabul. This is one of the most uh, incredible places in the world. I love talk to the people, listen to them, sit down with them, drink the same tea that they drink. Afghans have a fantastic view about the country, about the politics. And by talking to them little by little, I got the, the, the real feelings of the, what is happening in the country. And these helped me a lot, then start looking for the photographs that translate their ideas the fears of the moments or the joys of the moment. 
one of the main works of a photographer is bringing up the soul of the person in his face, in his eyes. We are just uh, translating what is in front of us. We don't create it. We just have to be there and wait for the moment that everything is coming up. One twenty-fifth of a second. That's it. It was in a fraction of a second that Reza took his most enduring portrait. This is a portrait of Masood, one of the very first portraits I took, 1985. And the, this portrait has become the portrait of Masood all over the world in Afghanistan. It's a photo that has become an icon, and now it will guide Reza through his journey. Reza will revisit the sites where he photographed Masood, hoping they lead him to a new image, a portrait of Afghanistan today. At a print shop in Kabul, Reza prepares the photos that will be his roadmap. But they also have another purpose, to honor a promise he made to Masood the last time they met. I came to Afghanistan uh, to fulfill a promise. Uh, that I have made to Masood many years ago. I promised him that I will make a big exhibition about Afghanistan pictures, and I always try to keep my promise. The exhibit will be held in Masood's homeland in the north. It was there that Reza first met Masood in 1985, when the young commander was training a guerrilla army. Masood would lead Afghan resistance against the Soviet occupiers, and after, hold back the Taliban in a decades-long struggle for Afghan unity. Reza was drawn to the freedom fighter's universal message. This was one man, few friends, in a small valley fighting for a free Afghanistan. He was looking for a time that the democracy will be all over the world. His ideas was much beyond this mountains and much beyond this border of the country. And these are the things that was the values that are very important for me. These are the values for them I fight also with my cameras. Reza found a common cause, but Masood would not live to see it realized. On September 9th, 2001, two days before the 9-11 attacks on New York and Washington, Al-Qaeda assassinated Masood. Now, Reza wants to find what endures of Masood's vision for his country. If Masood was alive and I asked him what is the future, it would have the same feeling in his eyes because the future is still uncertain here and nobody knows what is going to happen in the next three, five years here. Reza now embarks on his journey, following the trail of the past in search of an image of the present. As he leaves Kabul, the war being fought here becomes increasingly visible. People uprooted by fighting have taken refuge here, in shanty towns that ring the city.
Kul cümle icra istiyor, yolcu mı? Eks, yine bir bilmem eks bir. İcra sekiz. İcra. Bak bu ama ne? I believe that photography has this power to see the quality of the war, not through the dead bodies. The quality of the war you can you can show in a, just eyes of a little girl. You don't see her under bombardment, but you can see the, the, the, the all the fears and pain and sorrow of the bombardment in her eyes. It is not the dead bodies that is important to show. It is what is happening in the eyes of the survival that is important to show. This is what's happening here, imagine. And then if you go a little farther, you will see exactly the, the, the reality of this country. Reza will search for an image of that reality where Masood first took up arms. Reza is headed to the Panjshir Valley, a river gorge that lies to the north of Kabul. It's a place he has traveled to many times in the course of documenting 30 years of war here. So this is going to be the first times I'm returning back to many of those places that I have been with my soul there. His first goal, to find the cave where he took his most iconic picture of Masood. Then a young resistance leader fighting the Soviets. In no time, the wreckage of those wars appears. At every turn, Reza finds burned tanks and twisted steel, all that is left of the 10 years the Soviet Union occupied Afghanistan. Imagine when all these tanks pour inside Afghanistan. Everybody thought that, that it's it, they take over. And then you have one guy, almost 30 years old or less, up this valley saying that, I don't want my country being occupied by the foreigners. The Panjshir Valley turned out to be the perfect place to fight a guerrilla war. It was a critical Soviet supply route, well protected by mountains and caves. Masood and as few as 3,000 Mujahideen, holy warriors, turned this valley into a bloody front line that helped defeat one of the world's largest armies. Reza believes the fall of the Soviet Union itself started with Masood. Masood was the man that finally, by defeating the Russian army, shows to the whole Soviet Union people that this is a paper tiger, that you can defeat it. He was the man that bring down the Berlin Wall. Look what is written here. Metal cannot fight against faith. It's a sentiment both Reza and Masood might have shared. As a young man, Reza was jailed, tortured, and ultimately exiled from his native Iran for photographing the abuses of an oppressive regime. I spent three years in prison when I was 23 years old. I spent five months, 24 hours being tortured because just I was showing the injustice in Iran, showing the poverty in Iran. The minute which I can use this camera to bring the attention of the people to fight for freedom, this is where I go. The camera became Reza's weapon. Masoud's were mostly salvaged guns and improvised mortars. And an army of farmers and villagers, he turned into some of the world's fiercest warriors. Reza hopes some of these former Mujahideen can help him locate the cave where he first met Masood. So people tell him that there's one cave here which is still remaining. It's not long before villagers former warriors and commanders 
recognize Reza. <laughs> Reza is led into the mountains, where the Mujahideen guerrilla bases were hidden. Back then, an extensive network of caves provided shelter for Masood and his commandos while the Soviets bombed. This goes probably, this goes all around the mountains, on the mountains. The floor is still littered with live ammunition left over from the war. This is a totally active. I hope they are not going to explode while we're here. Don't want to snack it. Don't want to snack The cave is one of Masood's. We have all our ammunition here, but this is not the one. This is not the one. Reza remembers when most of Panjshir's men carried Kalishnikovs. Now, he finds a new image, men wielding sledgehammers. Smashing rocks is the best job many can find here, where unemployment is as high as 60%. The stones help build schools and roads, but the work is grueling. I, I mean... Oh. It is all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no, no, no, no. 36 pounds. Heavy. Point one and I say. <laughs> Among the workmen, Reza discovers a familiar face, a former commander in Masood's army. I find an old friend, Commandant Nasrat Mir. He was fighting Russian for many years, and this is what he's doing to earn money for all his families. After years of the fighting Russians, eight years in prison, and nothing's gotten from the government. Yes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Reza hasn't found his cave, but he has discovered an unsettling consequence of years of war. What they have been through, what they have seen, it is absolutely conceivable that some of them will take against arms and start struggling and fighting against the American. These people, for someone that has fought 20 years, this is the, the most humiliating way that you can treat a hero. And the heroes, they never give up. Just down the road, in a recently abandoned hideout, Reza finds further signs of discontent. Well, here I say, uh, this to America. So far, the people of the Panjshir have been receptive to American forces. The graffiti on these walls provide evidence that sentiments can change. Well, for the last three years, there were rumors that the new group of the Mujahideen, they are forming here in Panshu Valley to fight American troops. And here, that's where I find them. This is, this is their marks. This to Mujahideen that uh, were our American friends. This could be the new reality for Afghanistan. Hearts and minds slowly turning against whomever they see as the new occupiers. 
as Reza closes in on the cave where he first photographed Masood. He doesn't know if he will be welcomed or distrusted. People in Safid Shir village, some of them once Masood's men, helped put Reza on the right path. But almost immediately, there's a setback. He doesn't know what's going on, so he doesn't want people to cross the bridge and go out of places unless he got a special permission. <laughs> they were just uh, asking why they have so interest in the, going back to the old caves. Maybe they have some hidden agenda. You know, people that they were invaded always by the foreigners that came here saying that we are your friend. We are here to bring peace for you. We are here to bring prosperity for you. And then they find that, that all of them, they had it in agenda. So this is the way that they react. This is a Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I hope that will be solved, the problems. Reza has worked in Afghanistan enough to know when to retreat and when to push. With his goal of reaching Masood's cave near at hand, he opts to push. Now, it seems that uh, my negotiation with the family is working. I explain to them why and who am I and what I'm doing, and now it seems that they are accepting to go. After negotiating with some village elders, the barriers come down. A compromise is reached. The second uh, attempt to go. Reza can walk the mountains, but will have to steer clear of the village. If it isn't easy finding the cave this time, it's nothing like Reza's first attempt to find Masood, almost 30 years ago. It takes a very tough and very difficult journey out of all these mountains, walking for three months, coming to look for a man that hundred thousand Russian soldiers was looking for him. Hiding out in this mountain fortress, Masood and his soldiers lived for months off bread and dried mulberries, choosing their moment carefully to launch attacks on the Soviets. The route up this gorge is marked with signs of the bitter fights that took place here. Every place you see a well, green flag, it's meant that there are the Mujahideen or people from the village that was be killed during the war. They didn't have time really to carry them to the villages, so they were burying here. And... Reza's guide, Haji Mullah, remembers those days clearly. <laughs> Ah. There was a big gun here. Look at this. This is even was not used, this one. Look at this. Now, I have a book that I do. I'm a Turkish book, and I'm a bombardist to find out who someone just. So, I'm a little bit of a guy. The little mom of them, Marga John of Hollos. These people have been able to fight everybody that came here. What is in their heart, what is in their mind, what, what makes them so strong? These are the things that I'm looking for. Oh, it's cold. Very cold. <sighs> Rounding a familiar corner, 
Rezan knows he is finally getting close. Look here. You know, we got some. A man which is going to create an incredible movement out of these valleys, out of these villages. I wanted to come and to meet him. started and everybody ran different places and he told me he was, I was the only one he said come with me and we came here he was sitting here I was over there sitting over there this was the question I asked him but all right you are going to defeat the Russian that's your your aim is it but what would be the later reality this is your dream having a free country democratic elections but what is the reality what you think about it and then he start looking up before answering i was sitting over there and this was the time just to get this pictures exactly the light which you see is it still there the same light coming here you see concern is that if he was alive, the fate of Afghans would be different, would be better. This for sure. That if Masood was alive, he, the Afghans will have a better life. The, the peace that he was fighting, it's not here in Afghanistan for a moment. The democracy that he was fighting is not here. But we cannot stop even a second in our lifetime. Even a second, no rest. That's what he was also doing. And he always kept saying me that Reza, delet nalarza. Delet nalarza. Don't let your heart be shaken. Because if your heart is shaken, you will lose. The image Reza took that day would reach far beyond these mountains. But decades later, it is still not clear if Massoud's vision will triumph. As Reza heads north to the place where Massoud was assassinated, he'll search along the way for an image that provides an answer. In a mountain village, a once persecuted sect of Islam, known as Sufi, practices their faith openly again in Afghanistan. For Reza, trying to capture images of another side of this conflicted nation, it's welcome evidence of change. The Sufi's ecstatic practice, with its outpouring of emotion, was banned by the Taliban. Now there is a renewal of traditions and a flourishing of once forbidden culture. Hopeful signs of a new future against an ancient landscape. Reza's camera, torn between images of war and peace, tries to take it all in.
Down the valley from Masood's cave, Reza comes upon another scene of change, one that could provide the photograph he's been seeking. During the decades of fighting here, schools were shut, education put on hold. Now, eight years after Masood's death, the children of the Panjshir are learning to live without war. مثلا برادرش کاکاش ماماش اینا شهید شده باشن کلشون دستشونو بلند بکنید اونا که شهید دادن از زمان جهاد مقاومت شهید شده باشه هر کس از فامیلش باشه کاکا ماما دادا با دستونو بالا کنه نگار دارید خوب بلند کنید فهمیدید که آره میگم دیگه کاکا و ماما و برادر این افغانستان 30 years of war well over a million people were killed few families remained untouched. Gulbadin's father fought in Masood's army. Now, Gulbadin and his brothers and sisters live near and attend a school built by Masood. They offer Reza a glimpse into their lives. In a culture that guards private space carefully, it's a rare chance to see life at home. The boys work extra jobs, go to school, manage the house, and still make time for prayer. Gulbadin's three sisters, too, have big plans for their future. معلم شدن چی باید با درس بخونه چی باید بخونه دیگه مکتب خلاص بکنه دیگه پنتون پنتون باید برید دکتر دکتر خانم ها دکتر صاحب معلم صاحب in these faces <laughs> reza finds a fragile dream during the years of taliban rule the number of school children fell to a million all of them boys بیا ببین خوب خوب شده نه خوب خوب خوب نه <laughs> Today, around 7 million boys and girls go to school. <laughs> but their fate hangs on the outcome of the war. Exactly who Gulbadin and his generation would fight against is unclear. Would they take up arms against the Taliban, against the coalition forces, or perhaps against each other? An answer may lie with one of Masood's greatest hopes the dream of a unified Afghanistan. And Reza knows where he might find an image of it.
one of Masood's closest comrades, has offered Reza a rare glimpse into one of Afghanistan's newest institutions, the National Army. His name is General Bismillah Khan, and he has one of the hardest and arguably most important jobs in all of Afghanistan. With coalition help, he is tasked with building a modern Afghan army, 400,000 strong, that will someday take over security in Afghanistan. But it's not just the size of the force that is ambitious. It's the idea of a national army, one recruited from and fighting for a unified Afghanistan. In the diverse faces of the soldiers, Reza sees an image totally new to him. It's two different uh, military, two different Afghanistan. The one which I have met, the Mujahideen, and the National Army now. In a country often torn apart by ethnic and regional divisions, this is a new experiment. An army bringing together Tajiks, Pashtuns, and Hazaras, among many others. If they can make peace here, perhaps there is hope for the country at large. What I see to the face of these people, there are a lot of different nationalities, different ethnic groups, a mix of everything. Yet success is far from a sure thing. These recruits are fighting with limited resources and in the initial forays on the battlefield, dying in alarming numbers. It is not clear whether the idea of a professional army will translate here in a country that has fought guerrilla wars for generations. 62. shot on his target. What did he say? It's the start of something Masood envisioned, but like much of his legacy, the outcome remains uncertain. Go back to your rifle and then come back to me. Go back to your rifle and come back to me. Zoot, zoot, march, march. March, march. March, march, march. Seeing that finally Afghanistan may have a national army which defend the whole country, this is a good starting, I believe, if it goes well all the same way. Reza turns north again to Masood's final battleground and tragic end. He travels hundreds of miles, all the way to the border of Tajikistan, to a place called Deshti Kala. It's an almost lawless region of Afghanistan, where the central government has little control, and just getting there can turn into a major ordeal. The bridge across the Kokcha River is out. But there is still one way across. Makeshift ferries ply the Kokcha, shuttling passengers across the river on rafts of wood and sheet metal, held afloat by inflated cowskins and rubber tires. This is almost a place that Alexander the Great crossed the river with his soldiers. 2,000 years ago, the same scene. Nothing has changed, maybe. For Reza, this is an image of the Afghanistan that refuses to change, a place that still functions on ancient law, or no law at all. But the word is that 
One man was killed, now the police comes. You see, police is coming here. And this is not going to end nicely. Now they're, they're getting stones, people. They're getting robbed. A dispute between rival ferry operators turns into an attack with stones and knives. Hey, this guy's beating them up with a shovel. The police try to clear the scene by firing shots into the air. But for Reza, it's clear that he won't make it across tonight. With dawn, Reza once again attempts to cross the river in hopes of reaching Masood's final headquarters. Salam alaikum, sir. How are you? Okay. Okay. Okay. okay. Today, he's able to get a ride on a raft. On the far bank, Reza collects a jeep and military escort and heads into the steps of the Hindu Kush en route to Dashti Kala. When Reza was last here in 2000, the Taliban ruled 90% of Afghanistan. They could have conquered the country and possibly have spread further if not for Massoud and the alliance he built here in the north. In these barren hills, the Taliban were stopped. These are all the trenches that was built around this place. So when the Taliban were firing, the Mujahideen were going here, but the old places were to defend us for this place. Reza now searches for Masood's command post, once located at the highest vantage point in the region. <sighs> oh my God, the building. Oh. It's here that Reza took a final portrait of Masood now a seasoned warrior, taking a moment to celebrate a day of small victories. It would be one of the last photos Reza would take of Masood alive. He looks very happy. And this pictures, this smile has become one of the very popular pictures of Masood with Afghans. You see the pictures everywhere. 1985, 2000s. Less than a year later, the commander was killed. But today, in these mountains, the war seems almost distant. What makes me happy now? To see this, this land that was burned. Now agriculture is coming and people, I can hear a baby crying over there and uh, mother working over there on the land. You can see the life coming up and peace maybe, maybe, maybe peace. Now we had one more place left after here, which is over the mountains, going to the Khajabaddin. And this is the main Masood headquarters and the place that Masood was assassinated. By 2001, Masood had become a prime target for the Taliban and for Al Qaeda, which was already planning the attacks on the United States. They needed Masood out of the way first, and by September, an elaborate plot began to unfold. 
The final station in Masood's remarkable life was to be here, in this room. There were these two fake journalists, TV crew, very suspicious. For three weeks, the phony reporters pushed repeatedly for access to Masood, who finally agreed to sit for an interview on September 9th, 2001, two days before Al-Qaeda's 9-11 attacks. The journalists, they start preparing the cameras, and the first thing Masood told to his friend was, why did it take so long to prepare the cameras? They don't seem to be very professional. One of the cameramen is standing over there, another one near the door. The cameraman has a built battery. A very strong explosion, and the white, very strong white lights came out, and everybody just fell down. The suit fell down. The fire catch all over. First, they thought that it was a bombardment. But then they realized that the explosions happened inside the room. And his bodyguard arrived to him. And the suit told him, let me stand up. Help me to stand up. Masood's life was cut short. Yet his soldiers fought on. Backed by American special forces, they routed the Taliban in the months following September 11th. Masood had laid the ground for Afghan peace before becoming its modern martyr on behalf of the people he fought for. I just want to come here the last moment to remember who he was and what he fought for. A peace warrior. A peace warrior. That's what he was. Now, Reza is ready to keep his promise to the fallen warrior. Against a backdrop of rusted tanks in the Panjshir Valley, Reza mounts his photo exhibition. Having this exhibition, giving as a gift to the people, saying that this is what I have done, this is what my friendship with Masood brought me to do. But in no way it's saying goodbye to Masood. It's no way is just saying goodbye to the story. It's in reality, it's a new chapter. Reza's journey yielded more than one single image. His encounters revealed many faces of a country at an uncertain crossroads. It may not be all in one picture, but there are a few pictures that will explain the reality of this moment. Two pictures capture an Afghanistan caught in the grips of war, yet clinging to a fragile dream of peace. It was this little girl, and she has lost one arm. One side, you see the seeds of hatred. But there is another photograph showing the seeds of the hope. Still, people feel that it is possible to bring peace in this country. One twenty-fifth of a second. A fleeting moment captured on film. A photograph can translate a thousand emotions with a single glance and speak for those without voices. Every day is a new day for me. Every face is a new face for me. Every picture is a new chapter for me here. 